Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. My name is Vinny and I'm joined with today's guest, Darcy. He's selling his affiliate business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. So welcome to the show, Darcy, and how are you doing? Hello, thanks Vinny. Great to be here. Yeah, and it's our pleasure to have you on today's episode. Really looking forward to talking about your affiliate business. And just before we dive in, let me give a very brief summary for our listeners so they know what they're in store for today. So today's listing is an affiliate business that's in the health and fitness and supplements niches, and it was created in November 2014. The average monthly revenue for the business is $2,205.00. And it makes an average of $1,343 per month in net profit. The assets included in the sale are a primary domain and all the site's contents and files, a domain that acts as a 301 redirect, an email list hosted on MailChimp with over 1,300 subscribers, and several social media accounts. You can head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 50601 to learn more about the business. And if you want to start your due diligence, just remember to unlock the listing first. Darcy, that's a very general overview of the business, but let's find out a bit about yourself. Can you tell me a bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Is this your first gig? Sure. Yep. So this particular one is the first affiliate style site I've put together. This particular site did start life as an e-commerce site when the business itself had a bit of a different structure. So it's quite a unique affiliate site in that respect that it's been converted from e-commerce over to be strictly affiliate. But outside of that, I've been involved in affiliate marketing and e-commerce websites for five to six years. I have a couple of client websites I work on and a couple of other personal projects. So, yep, starting to gather some good experience in the affiliate niche and learning immense amounts as I go. Yep, definitely sounds like you've racked up a fair amount of experience in this industry for sure. I mean, as you were learning, were there any communities or YouTubers or just any sort of resources that you felt really helped you as you were learning more about affiliate businesses? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think as probably most affiliate SEOs can attest to. I spend a lot of time online looking at resources and blogs. You know, Matt Diggity's Affiliate Lab course has been huge. The guys from Authority Hacker are a big inspiration. They put some amazing stuff out there. You know, always listening to Empire Flippers and, you know, Matthew Woodward, a few of the top guys in that. So, yeah, I've got a a few key courses and, you know, forever working on and, you know, always on the internet looking for the... uh, you know, the next changes in the industry and what these big guys that do all the testing are up to. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's a constant job keeping the finger on the pulse, as I'm sure you're aware. Absolutely. Yeah. So it sounds like it's a mixed bag of, like you say, just staying up to date with the authority figures in the space, listening to podcasts, as well as trying to attend and consume courses as you go along as well, where you can. For sure. Absolutely. Yep. This business started off as an e-commerce business and they eventually transitioned into affiliate. Can you tell me a bit more about how you came up with the idea you know, to start this business in particular and you know, why in these niches? Of course. Yeah, yeah. So initially, this particular business was the online store for a, like a health and whole foods cafe that I started. So ended up manufacturing and producing our own products and shipping them out Australia wide. And then just due to a few lifestyle changes on my part and a few sort of a few issues I had to address, the the cafe Whole Foods side of it needed to be closed. And it just ran as a pure online store for quite some time. Again, just producing products and also retailing other manufacturers' products. And then, you know, in Australia here, there's pretty high cost of shipping, high cost of running sort of physical bricks and mortar business. There's a lot of expenses to incur particularly staff, things like that. So it just got all a bit much to make a good profit on versus the time I was putting in. 
I was probably a week off just letting it all go at that stage. And I had a couple of friends that were into affiliate marketing and yeah, they convinced me just to have a look at what it would be to, you know, convert it from an e-commerce to an affiliate site. So I thought one last attempt at making it work and, you know, put a bit of time into changing all the, you know, links over to be affiliate links. And before I knew it, you know, it hit the ground. I mean, the site attracted a lot of great natural links as an e-commerce store, you know, a bit of domain authority behind it at the time and a bit of organic traffic just being generated to, you know, a lot of product pages, which are now product reviews, you know, products that I was very familiar with because I retailed them. And then, yeah, launched the blog and started really building out some, you know, very relevant content and buyer's guides and things like that. Yeah, one thing led to another and it's turned into the most successful aspect of this particular business's life cycle. So, yeah, it's definitely not the conventional route to building an affiliate site. And, you know, I learned a lot of unique points along the way through doing it. But, yeah, by all means, it's come together and it's worked really well. So, Yeah, that's a really interesting story there. Like you said, it's definitely an unusual route, you know, because I think a lot of people tend to start with the monetization method first and sort of build from there, maybe change the niche as they go along. But I guess in this case, it was a case of changing the monetization to make sure that it would, you know, like you say, stay alive somehow. And obviously you found success with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, a very unconventional way to go about it. But, you know, whatever works, right? Absolutely. For people who are, you know, new to online businesses or affiliate marketing in particular, why would you say that this business model is, you know, a really great entry point to get started? Sure. Like I said, I think firsthand for me, the transition from e-commerce and bricks and mortar over to affiliate was just a huge realization in my mind in terms of, you know, the lifestyle you're able to create surrounding your business and the resources it demands. So, you know, having it as an e-commerce really wore me down, you know, the logistics side, the staff side, the wages, all that stuff, everything that goes into running a business like that was very time consuming, didn't really allow much of a lifestyle outside of work, you know, which was one of the main reasons I was looking to sort of edge out of that. And yeah, in picking it up as an affiliate venture instead, you know, it's a fantastic business model. It's allowed me so much more flexibility in my work day, much more creativity, and to be honest, much more profit, you know, like the expenses involved in running it as an affiliate versus, you know, the other business models that it was prior, you know, significantly reduced. So, you know, I am just 100% behind the affiliate content website model. It's, I think it's a great place to start if you're looking to get into, you know, an internet-based business. Yeah, that's a solid answer right there. Just reflecting on your business in particular, you know, it's seen steady growth over the you know, past couple of years, there's decent earnings, but our listeners will be wondering why you're selling the business right now instead of staying with it. Yeah, the main sort of sticking point I've come to in this business is my technical SEO personally isn't fantastic. You know, my strengths lie more in content, which I really enjoy as well. And I've kind of hit a point in this business. It is hosted on Shopify still, which is, you know, as everyone knows, primarily an e-commerce platform. It's not the best design for an affiliate site in terms of functionality. And it is heavier on the fees. It does cost a little bit to be on Shopify. But in terms of migrating the site and really digging into the technical side of restructuring it, I'm super confident in it. So that's not something I've been able to do myself. And I just haven't found the right person to engage to do it for me at the, you know, at a price that feels like it's worth doing it for. So, you know, while the site is running and profiting very well on Shopify, I think there's a huge opportunity there to move it over. I think there's, you know, some things that are lacking because it is running on Shopify rather than WordPress, for example. But yeah, my expertise isn't really in that area. And, you know, given that this is sort of has been my primary affiliate site for some time, I'm quite excited to get into a couple of other sort of starter sites that I've got going. And, you know, this would provide the funds to start, you know, launching into some affiliate sites from scratch and start applying some of the stuff I've learned over the last few years of developing and building this one out. So for sure. Yeah, I think that makes sense. It sounds like it's uh, a bit of a, a double whammy there in terms of, you know, you maybe you've taken the site as far as you can go with your current skill set, but yeah. selling the site would give you the opportunity to raise the funds to 
like you say, pursue other objects and put that knowledge and experience that you do have with affiliate marketing into use by growing a couple of other side projects as well. So For sure. Yeah, I think we can probably play to my strengths in a new venture or two at this point and, you know, admit my weaknesses in the SEO world. So, yeah. I think that's fair enough. I mean, it sounds like because you were mentioning, you know, perhaps if someone with the right skill set who knew how to migrate the site as, you know, over to a different platform like WordPress or something, you know, in the right hands, it could be a really big opportunity for them. And we will talk a bit more about the opportunities later on. But I just want to ask you about your experience as you were running the business. Was there anything that you learned that you felt really worked for you while you're building this business? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, initially I was very hands on with it, as, you know, most affiliates are in the start. Put your time in rather than money. But yeah, over time, as it grew and started generating some revenue, I started redirecting that into outsourcing some stuff and, you know, definitely learned that's the way to go about it if you have the funds and the means to do it. You know, free up the time to work on the business rather than in the business. And having that extra help and those resources to do that, yeah, allowed me to strategize more than sort of, you know, reactive daily tasks. So really allowed me to dive into sort of, you know, planning out content strategy, you know, looking at building, you know, the domain authority of the site, things that sort of take a bit of a site level viewpoint rather than a microscope viewpoint, which you're sort of limited to when you're the one writing the content for everything and optimizing. So yeah, definitely learned that, you know, the outsourcing where possible, you know, allowed me to really look at the site wide goal and strategy which was a, a big shift in, you know, the growth of the site. So that was a nice realisation. Yeah, I think you make a really good point there about balancing the micro and the macro management of running a business, basically. As soon as you outsource, it gives you, like you say, that bit more room to have a bird's eye view of stuff instead of being down in the trenches and looking at things in a very granular way. So, yeah, I think that's a really good point there. Was there any software or tools that really helped you when you first started running the business? Ahrefs has been, you know, obviously it's a cornerstone for for many SEOs and has been for me as well. And then the adoption of Surfer SEO for content stuff has been a game changer. And to be honest, they're the main two that I use. I mean, it's very much a content dominant strategy that I've been using on the site. And between those two tools, you know, most of my needs are covered in terms of developing writer briefs and, you know, making sure we're using all the right terminology, targeting the right keywords and optimizing accordingly. So, yeah, between those two, I've pretty well had the SEO needs covered. Yeah, I pretty much agree with that. I think others also, you know, like decent alternatives would include maybe like Mars or SEMrush, you know, but like you say, all tools that basically do the same thing and like you say, in the content heavy industry. Was there anything that you tried that didn't give you the ROI that you were hoping? To be honest, I haven't really gone too left of field with my tactics for the growth of the site. You know, like I said, most of my sort of formal learnings have come from Matt Diggity's affiliate lab and it's, you know, tried, tested and trusted systems that just sort of repeatedly work. So I wasn't out there trying to, you know, flash in the pan SEO stuff. It was really just trying to consistently produce quality content and, you know, doing good keyword research to make sure, you know, targeting the terms that we would rank for based on the site authority and yeah basically just making sure we're doing the right stuff consistently so there wasn't anything i really tried sort of you know outside of that that didn't work as such it's not an overnight success game the affiliate i really think it's just a matter of persisting with what you know works as you know there's there's a few good pillars that are recognized industry-wide as what you need to do and i think if you just stick the path and grind it out you see that growth come in over time and that's kind of you know that's been the plan all along with it and that's been the result too is that you know we've just been slowly gathering authority and traffic as we go that's basically it yeah that's probably solid advice for life as well to be honest stick yeah, with, yeah. Uh, stick with the strategy <laughs> and keep plugging away at it for sure let me ask you darcy for this site the majority of the traffic is mainly coming from organic search or is there any paid advertising involved No paid advertising. It is majority organic search. There is some, you know, direct referral stuff and also some social traffic. So pretty active on Pinterest, got pretty good Facebook and social media following. 
you know, it contributes a bit. But yeah, all in all, it's, you know, I can't remember the number off the top of my head without looking at it. But I think it's around, you know, 86% organic search traffic. And then the rest of it's a smattering of social referral direct. So, but yeah, no paid ads being run for it. When it was an e-commerce store, there were paid ads run, obviously. But as soon as it made that transition to affiliate, there was no more paid advertising. Gotcha. Uh, is there anything that you actually do in terms of like actively for marketing nowadays? I have consistent posting on the main social media accounts, Instagram and Facebook. And then we also have RSS feeds leading to the other social profiles for some social fortressing and signals. And then, yeah, quite active on Pinterest too. make sure that we're sort of updating Pinterest boards. Pinterest is probably our best social media referral. And then we run a weekly email campaign as well, basically just highlighting some of the best finds from our affiliates and deals going on. So keeping that subscriber list engaged and active. And then other than that, just promoting content pieces when we've published and mainly promoting through social media and email channels. So, yeah, that's basically the nuts and bolts of it for the promotion side. Yeah. And I guess just to follow up with that, then, can you describe what else you do to maintain the business on, say, a day to day or even a weekly basis? I currently, as of a couple of months ago now, have a VA on board. So, yeah, that, that's been really good. She does, you know, most of the day-to-day operational stuff on the site, so constantly improving, you know, technical checks and stuff where we can, any 404s that have come up. I'm basically managing her day, so like I said, I try and look at it from a site-wide perspective and then set her up on tasks that will be working in the business, and that goes from, you know, updating old content, you know, particularly since we've ticked over 2021, there's a big push at the moment to get everything up to spec for this year, and then, yep, she'll be working on, editing the pieces we get back from the writers and publishing them as well. So it's more of a, you know, I kind of manage out her day and then I'll start looking at any kind of strategy stuff for the next content pieces, any technical issues that we're having that I can deal with, I'll jump on. Anything I can't deal with, I try and outsource as well. So, but, you know, all in all, having a VA on board allows me to, you know, really set up the day quite quickly and allow her to get to work. So there's, you know, I'm doing a lot less in the business nowadays, which is nice. It's not as much of a a time sink and actually moving things forward a lot quicker. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And if you did stay with the business, what are some of the ways that you would try to grow it? I'd definitely look at a migration from, well, there's two angles for the growth here, as I see it. Being that it is on Shopify, it would lend itself to not only being an affiliate site, which it's showing currently works, but also adding a dropship component to it if you wanted to go that way. You know, Shopify dropshipping is a very easy thing to put in place, you know, and it's a website that already generates a lot of its own organic traffic and you could run paid ads to start uh, promoting your dropship products or you could even white label your own products and sell your own products through essentially an e-commerce platform that is generating a lot of organic traffic as it stands. Or the other way to go, like I mentioned before, would be migrate the site over to WordPress and really double down on it being pure affiliate. That would reduce a lot of the expenses that are shown in in the business at the moment. Shopify is much more expensive to run on than WordPress. It's a lot of, you know, associated apps and monthly fees to use the software. So the big expense saving there instantly if you moved it away from Shopify. And then, yeah, have a good look at what's on the site. There's definitely some thin content that needs pruning and consolidating. That's what I'd be looking to do going forward. And there's plenty more content opportunities in the niches that we're dabbling in. So we're really just getting started on the uh, article guides for a lot of the categories that we're already sort of showing good ranking for. And then ramping up link building as well with any affiliate site. It's definitely at the stage where it could, you know, benefit from, you know, good outreach campaigns, really lifting that authority. So there's, you know, depending on the potential buyer's resources and skill sets and what they're looking to do with the site, I think there's a number of angles here to reduce expenses and, yeah, really get some substantial growth in a couple of different ways depending on how they wanted to go about it. Sure. Yep. Definitely. Look, a couple of at least big opportunities there, like you say, to either continue doubling down on the, with the affiliate direction or to transition back to the e-commerce route as well, if someone wanted to, for sure. I was going to ask you, because obviously all businesses have inherent risks with them. What would you say are some of the biggest risks with this business that a buyer should be aware of? If you look at the Ahrefs and analytics traffic data, it did quite a hit in the May update as did many, many sites. 
So, yeah, copped a bit of a blow there in terms of traffic and obviously earnings after that. And then also copped a bit of a dive in December, but it started bouncing back really nicely from that. So I think that's a risk that's in place for almost any website on the Internet nowadays is that these algorithm updates seem to be coming through with quite a bit of frequency and, you know, hitting sites left, right and center with uh, a lot of unknowns as to why for a bit there. So always a risk when buying a website in that respect. You can never predict the algorithm. But for the site itself, I really can't think of anything outside of that wider aspect of algorithm updates as a big risk, you know, that there's been no dodgy backlinking to the site. You know, it's never been dropped. It's just been a solid domain the whole time, steadily receiving growth. Yeah, I really can't see much outside of that, to be honest. Yeah, fair enough. Last few questions from me, really, as we wrap up the interview. How much support are you offering buyers? Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to, you know, a month post-purchase to jump on a couple of Skype calls and email back and forth to, uh, you know, help someone get their head around it. I definitely understand it's not a conventional WordPress affiliate site. You know, I am quite familiar with the workings of, you know, modifying a few Shopify apps to make it all very affiliate friendly. So, yeah, more than happy to jump on a couple of Skype calls and reply to emails wherever needed for a month post-purchase. That should be plenty of time to get the handover done smoothly and the buyer up and running. So Great to hear. Are you willing to commit to a non-compete? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. And last question from me then. If you put yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why would you say that this is a business that's worth buying? I think as the seller, I'd like to you know, mention that the content has mainly been done by me from the start, you know, with some outsourcing happening over the last little while. And then all of the editing of that's been done by me. So there's been a real focus on content quality. I think there's a lot of websites being sold out there that are, you know, there's a lot of spun stuff happening and a lot of sort of cheap and nasty content that is particularly starting to become problematic with a lot of these updates and stuff. So yeah, it's been a very hands-on site for a long time. I guess I'm tooting my own horn here, but I feel like it's been done very well. There's been a real attention to detail on it. But I also think there's still a lot of opportunity for growth in it, particularly from just continuing a good content plan to really deciding which way you'd you'd want to go with it. So yeah, lots of potential, but everything that's been done so far has been done with a strong view on detail and quality. So Yeah, that's great to hear. Darcy, is there anything that you'd like to share that you think I might have missed? Not that comes to mind, Vinny. I think yeah, I think it's a great list of questions. I I think all in all I've yeah, kind of said what I think I need to say about it. Yeah, I mean it's definitely been you know, it's a business I started from scratch many years ago, so it's a bit of a you know, a business of love there from the start, but I've definitely learnt over time that you know, as things change it's you know, you realise when it's time to move on from things. So it'd be sad to see it go and it'd be good to see it get in the hands of someone, you know, who's got the right resources and know how and yeah, a bit of enthusiasm to get into it and take it to the, the next level. So For sure. Well, Darcy, thank you for joining me with today's interview. I hope you meet the right buyer, strike the right deal. Thanks, Vinny. Much appreciated, mate. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 50601. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked the listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about the business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.